cataractcoach.com, and I want to show you a special technique today. I've used it in almost all my videos, but I've never really pointed it out, and I want to make sure you understand it. Let me show you how we fill the eye with viscoelastic. And you notice when we fill the eye with viscoelastic, we push it with more force into that angle that's opposite, and there's less force in placing it here at the paracentesis. So my special maneuver is, at the end of the case, to sweep that angle opposite of the paracentesis, where we really have pushed the viscoelastic into the angle. We sweep that with balanced salt solution to make sure that there's no leftover or retained viscoelastic, because that's what's going to cause the pressure spike in the immediate post-op period. I'll show you that technique at the end of the case. This is otherwise a routine case. You see I marked with my forceps, I've made a mental note of where the size and position of the caps rectus should be. And we're going to tear here about a five to five and a half millimeter caps rectus. Nice pivoting position. And that's uh, round and well centered. We'll now use bounce salt solution on the blunt cannula here to do the hydrodissection. And I do like a dispersive viscoelastic at the beginning of the case because that really protects the cornea. So I want to prolapse this nucleus for phaco flip and chop. There's the nucleus that's up. We'll make sure it stays there. And we'll put the phaco probe in after a little bit more dispersive viscoelastic. I want to protect the cornea. That's my most important goal. And that's why the dispersive comes in handy. It is a little tougher, you're right, to do a capsorexis. It's easier with a cohesive because the dispersive tends to flow out of the eye. But I have faith in your skills and you're a good surgeon. You can learn to do a visco... Uh, under viscoelastic dispersive style, you can learn to do a capsorexis. So we've chopped the nucleus in half, and we're just going to emulsify each piece. So for me, I use a dispersive viscoelastic at the beginning of the case. Yes, the rex is more difficult, but yes, it's better for the cornea, and I can pivot in the incision and prevent most of the prolapse or loss of viscoelastic. And then I like a cohesive viscoelastic at the end of the case, because the cohesive allows me to... Uh, expand the bag maximally for lens acceptance for the IOL delivery, and then the cohesive is easier to remove at the end. So cataracts out, and we're just going to clean up the cortex here using the IA probe. And most of the dispersive viscoelastic still remains inside the eye. For this setting here, the cortex removal, yes, we have very high vacuum, but flow is not terribly high. It's probably about 30 to 40 cc's per minute of flow. And vacuum can be high, at least 500, maybe 600 millimeters of mercury. So cleaning up our caps are back here. The viscoelastic still remains. Now this is a nice eye because it's very blue and very bright red reflex. And that allows to see very well the shadow of the viscoelastic. So here's the cohesive. As we inject that, we fill up the caps are bag. Little bit of lens material that you see there is actually up against the corneal endothelium. It's not in the caps are bag. And we'll remove that at the end, fixating the eye, and we'll deliver our single piece acrylic lens right into the capsular bag. There's the delivery. And that looks great. And we'll open this up. Capsular axis should be just about the perfect size to overlap that optic for 360 degrees. We'll rotate the lens to get it into the preferred position. And that looks great. So you can see now, if you look at the red reflex, there is some viscoelastic that you can see against the corneal endothelium and also some lens material, that'll all be removed now. So going in first behind the lens to remove the viscoelastic and any little particles that are left, that looks great. Now in front of the lens to remove that, and we'll go a cl little closer to the, the corneal endothelium, and you can see how we fracture and remove parts of the uh, dispersive viscoelastic, and we'll try clear up here near the angle and going all around, and that looks really good, and I like the rex's overlap, I don't see any more viscoelastic, and that looks pretty good. And most people would call it, call it quits here and seal up the incision. We're going to do a step further. Here's the technique I'm showing you. Pay attention. We seal the main incision. I can see there's a little bit of viscoelastic floating around. But when I sweep the angle, look at the sweep. The angle sweep reveals, wow, a lot of retained viscoelastic. And I thought we did a good job removing it. So let's go back inside the outer squirt. Let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of viscoelastic in here still. That would cause a big pressure spike on post-op day one. 
Pressure spikes on post-op day one are not from steroid use. That usually happens 10 to 14 days after from steroids. That's only a small percent of patients. Post-op day one pressure spikes are from this, retained viscoelastic. So you need to wash out all that viscoelastic, make sure there's none left in the eye. Center up our lens, that looks pretty good. Let's seal the incision. And so do the angle sweep at the end of the case. If you see a little viscoelastic, you can take it out. If you see a lot, do what I did here. Put the eye pro back in the eye. High flow here. 60 cc's of fluid are flowing a minute. That allows us to really wash out any viscoelastic. And now let's sweep the angle again. And we're sure, set out of the lens and sweep the angle, nothing remains. So try the angle sweep for all your routine cataract cases. Thank you.